Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. Remember, the quiet ones always have the darkest secrets. It's time to uncover them on Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring former prosecutor and defense attorney Eric Faddis. Well, you knew it wouldn't end uh, smoothly, at least the ride up into the uh, trial of uh, uh, Delphi accused uh, Mr. Fuck, I can't, what the fuck's his name? I, it's Richard Allen. God, I got to read you. I'm like, I'm grasping for the name. I'm not seeing it on the screen and it's not coming to me. Let's try again. Well, you knew the road leading up to the trial of Richard Allen would not necessarily be a smooth one. And it has not been a smooth one thus far. Now we're here at the doorstep of going into the courtroom and him getting his day in court, or at least a very skewed day in court due to uh, Judge Gull. And here's how it got skewed just a little bit more. Todd Click, the only officer that we know of in this whole case, who at the very beginning said, I think there's more to this, helped investigate the Odinism theory, was actually going to be one of the star witnesses for the defense, may still be arrested just the other day uh, and uh, charged with falsifying information, forging documents, basically, uh, in his role as a DCS family case manager. It has nothing to do with with the case against Richard Allen. It's essentially some sort of a paperwork offense. Um, but enough to put some maybe doubts in the credibility in the mind of the jury of this one person from the police force there who who has some sympathy and thinks there may be something else going on here. Joining me to discuss, Eric Faddis, defense attorney, former prosecutor. What do you make of this uh, with this arrest and the timing uh, of this charge right before the trial is about to that's the thing is the timing is striking um, because what it tells me is, is under the law, usually you can impeach a witness based on alleged acts of dishonesty. So those include like fabricating documents, um, forgery, stuff like that. And that's exactly what they went after this defense witness for, you know, uh, right before the trial is about to begin. Uh, I wonder if they had this information for a period of time and sat on it uh, and chose just now to bring it up. But it just screams of like, trial strategy as opposed to like justice i mean is i mean can a a prosecution do something like this as a trial strategy can they can they can they legally do something like this i know if he did do something illegal which maybe he did um yes of course you know you should bring that up and and if charges need to be brought they need to be brought but if they knew if they knew for months years maybe about this impropriety sitting over here and they're just going we're not going to do anything about this we're not going to play this card until it's the right time. Is that something a prosecutor's office has the right to do when using it uh, basically as, as a chip in a, a totally different case? You know, um, it, whether they have the right or not, it happens pretty mm -hmm. often. Um, what I would say is there is a doctrine called vindictive prosecution, which essentially says, hey, you're bringing a prosecution in bad faith. You're bringing it for the wrong reasons. You're not bringing it because, you know, you're, you're trying to go after a person who you think committed a crime, because if so, and if they had the information regarding that, you know, months or years ago, they should have brought it then. The fact they're bringing it now at least gives uh, an air of possible vindictive prosecution, but they get away with stuff like that all the time. What do you think the purpose is here? Uh, what's the end game on, on Todd click? Cause they, they can't really talk about Odinism in this trial. I mean, this would be kind of the only way that maybe a little bit would enter the lexicon of, of the trial um, by him talking about uh, the lack of evidence or just, just his thoughts on what was going on. Um, is this just strictly to discredit what, what's your thoughts? I think it's, I think it's to discredit the defense to kind of like, uh, you know, kick their legs out from under them right before the big battle. Uh, and, and so uh, I think they're just taking whatever additional measures they can to shore up this case that a lot of people are watching and a lot of people have asked questions about. There's one of two things happening here. Either they really have a case and Richard Allen is dead to rights and they're going to present that in court and the rest of us will magically see, oh, we've all been wrong all this time. They have this. He truly is the one who did it. 
or they're going to have an extremely weak case. And there's not going to be a lot that any of this stands on. And it's going to look really bad because it's going to look like, oh, you have been trying to put your hand on the scale over here because you don't have very much. Um, typically, I would say, I mean, I, you're the attorney. If, if there is a very strong case, you probably don't need to do things like this. You probably don't need to be kicking out the legs of, of everything you possibly can and, and amending rules and saying you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that if you got the strong case. Is that accurate? You know, I, that that was my approach when I was a prosecutor. When I have the goods, man, I don't care what you do on the other side. Yeah. I know I'm in the right, and I know I have the substantiation to back it up. And so I'm not going to, you know, take what some people might see as, you know, petty uh, shots against somebody else, uh, especially when like the prosecutors, they're supposed to wear the white hats. They're supposed to be the upstanding uh, folks here. And um, but in practice, that's just not always how it goes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just it, it, it's it's I know I use this a lot, but it's shocking. I mean, just the amount of things in this case that have gone really awry. Uh, it almost gives him almost a guaranteed you know, new trial card, no matter what, how this uh, this ends up, especially if he's uh, convicted. But I mean, if he walks free, do, do you feel like Delphi Delphi really, really has a, a financial vested interest in him not walking free? I mean, I can think it's probably gonna be a massive lawsuit if he does, uh, if they do find him not guilty. I think absolutely, because um, th these are the types of cases where uh, if they did wrongfully pursue someone, the police department could be bankrupt. I mean, they're, they're, it's a small enough town and it's a large enough tr alleged travesty that, um, that that they really are invested not only in the conviction of this person because they, they allegedly think he did it, but also because if they screw this up, their butts could be on the line on a civil case later on. It feels like they're, I mean, this is just my conjecture. It feels like Delphi is bluffing in a really bad poker game and they're just <laughs> like really, really bluffing badly. Like, oh, I got, I got nothing, guys. You can't talk about Odinism. I got nothing. We can't talk about anything that might relate to these other suspects. I got, let's get rid of this witness. I mean, that's just kind of how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's like they're so pot committed at this point, they couldn't possibly shift. They couldn't possibly, or I mean, they could, and perhaps, you know, by some accounts they should, but um, they're not going to shift from their course of action now. They think they're at the finish line, and I think they're going to go full steam ahead to see what outcome they can secure. Yeah, it, it may be a full steam ahead right off a cliff, too. We'll have to find <laughs> out. Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're in the thick of a true crime saga, every detail sinking in, and then, wham, a commercial about something you couldn't care less about. It's like being served a microwaved dinner at a five-star restaurant. But it doesn't have to be this way. Go for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get uninterrupted, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that dig even deeper into the muck, and early access so you can brag to your friends. It's like ordering the secret menu at a crime buffet. So, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and savor every twisted detail without interruption.